Um, you'll note, are we rolling? Yep. You'll note that I've got my solvent open and you'll notice that it, my, um, my, my little ring or my um, metal device to clean out my brush is submerged completely. You wanna have a lot of solvent. Do not skimp on your solvent either. When I start a painting, um, I actually typically do not draw it out with a pencil because pencil will mix. And what I'm working on here is uh, I'm working on uh, oil paper. And oil paper is very simply just paper that is primed. It's been gessoed. Um, and they sell it in art supply stores, which is where I bought it. Um, and I follow all the rules that I would normally follow for creating an artwork, a drawing. And I see a double shadow here. And so the very first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start off with my darkest darks. And what that'll do is that'll, rent, that'll basically solidify my drawing and it might not be the color that I actually want to go with, but I'll have something to contend with. I can separate the planes, but I'm not going to put too much detail in. Okay, and I'm ready. All right. So the very first thing that I want to do is I want to actually mix my local color or local value. Yes. I can see the pair. You can't? You can move it. That's fine. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to establish what color I'm looking at, the whole base of it. So the majority of that actual, um, what, was, what is that, squash, is a kind of yellow ochre, isn't it? So I'll put out a little bit of yellow ochre and then I'll take the tip of my palette knife and I'll hold it up against my subject and I'll say, you know what, it's a little lighter than that. So I'll take a little bit of my white, it's still wet, mix it up, hold it up, and say, you know what, it's actually a little cooler because I'm looking primarily at shadow. How do I cool off a yellow? No. I add the compliment. So you have to memorize the compliments if you haven't already. So purple is yellow's complement. So I'll mix a little bit of a purple over here, my lizard and crimson, and my ultramarine, and I'll take a touch of that and mix it in there. And then I'll hold it up and I'll say, hot damn, and I'll put it on. Okay, so that's the biggest trick that I'm gonna show you is compliments. Because the rule of compliments is essentially such that you can pretty much rely on it. Yes, your vision will change depending on, depending on your, um, I probably did this too big, but depending on your lighting scenario. But I'm just gonna slap it down. Remember, I'm timed here. No, I'm not gonna take up a whole hour of your time. But what that does is it neutralizes what I'm looking at in such a way that it will turn the form and fit within the, um, the atmosphere. And I've got a little bit here, and then I can begin to lighten it. And I'll start to change the way I'm dealing with that color. And you'll notice it gets a lot lighter over here. So I'll, I do add white because it is actually white that I'm adding to that yellow. And I'll slap it down. I might have to add a little bit more. And I'm not being too shy about it. Now, in life, we see very, very little actual bright white and actual black, okay? Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna maintain that you do not use too much. And I do see a little bit of an orange there because I'm just constantly looking for temperature shifts. And I'm not going to worry so much about my edges just yet. I just want to lay down the color. Okay. I need to get a little bit darker here. 
Well, the thing is, is I actually need to mix more color. So I don't want to jump right into finish. So I want to make sure that my knife is clean before I move to the next little color, which is that green, that dominates. So that green is gonna be, how do we make green? Blue and yellow. So let's see, there's gonna be some experimentation here. We might need a lot more of this blue, but I'm not probably gonna go to the edges for this. So every time you mix color, you use knife? No, not necessarily. You don't have to. But this is for this, uh, for this, for what I'm demoing, I think it's probably the best way to show you. All right, I actually see a touch of white in that green. So you don't always have to use a palette knife at all. Um, but the palette knife will, will allow you to move fast and it'll allow you to keep from using a million brushes. See how quickly I can lay that on? And part of the hard part about painting is getting it on there, getting it to move where you want it to. And I'm not thinking about the minutia like the stem yet. And I've got a different tone here, a different color, so I'll use a different brush. Uh, that is, I might use a touch of my phthalo blue in order to make this shadow. And I'll use a little bit of my darker yellow. And then I'll hold it up. And I'll say that's pretty good. Oh yeah, spot on. So you see, there's a big difference here in terms of contrast. So I'll lay that down. And I use my um, solvent to move it around for the first layer if I'm gonna make a fully finished painting, for sure. And then pound that up. And I'll go all the way up to the edge. If you do uh, end up experimenting on some uh, oil paper, it's really, really absorbent and it's very difficult to move the paint around. Far more difficult than just your um, your panels. It's okay, I can fix that. So I'll get that on there. So the majority of the time is actually not spent mixing colors. The majority of the time is actually spent just trying to put it on there to cover a wide range. Now here's the thing, I'm going to have a lot light, lighter scenario over here than I do over here. And it, this I can actually make a little bit darker, but I don't want to just add the blue in order to make it darker because then it's blue. So how do I make a color darker? The rule of compliments. So for that green, what do you think its complement is? Green red. is the complement to red. So because it's a dark green, I'm not going to go with my light red. I'm going to go with my dark red, so my alizarin crimson. Like match the tone of it? Yep. So I can go back in here and I can uh, subdue that tone a little bit if I need to get a little bit darker. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So over here, it's far yellower. And so I can actually just pick up some of that yellow create a bit of a hybrid between these two tones, lay it on there, and mix it while it's on there. This is called wet and wet. So this will lighten that color. By using the actual qualities of oil paint. This is why we work in oil paint, not acrylic. You can't do this with acrylic. Because it's wet, it stays wet. So I can change the tone as I move. Now, this gets a lot darker, doesn't it? And I'm starting to see like a lot of purple. So I'm actually gonna mix another purple in order to really push 
the volume of my, what are we here? It's a little too dark, so we'll knock it back with its complement, which is yellow ochre. It's a little too dark. We'll mix a tone in between. So I'll lay that down. I think about the core value here. I think about the shapes that it creates. see a really deep dark cast shadow here. I'm just going to suggest. I'll take a drier brush that's bigger and I'll blend it. And I'll use the paint that's already on there in order to actually turn this. Does that make sense? Okay. Change that. I'll solidify, I can reiterate brush marks, bring things back in. But this is why I don't wanna to put too much paint on there from the get-go, because I won't be able to do things like that. So I won't go into things like the bright highlight yet. But I can save it and say, oh, I might have a little bit of a mark. And that can be a hard edge. Should it be a hard edge here? Not necessarily. I might have some other stuff going on up here, okay? All right. So from here, I'm obviously thinking a lot about a good deal of color of that brown. And I already have a base tone for that brown. So if I take my burnt umber and I mix that on top of my yellow that I already have, I'm gonna get something real close. Probably a little redder, so I'm gonna take a little bit of my red. And then I'm gonna hold it up. Not quite. Burnt Sienna. I think I probably should have started with Burnt Sienna. You see what I mean by don't be skimpy. So I feel better about that. I lay it on quickly. I'm not going to let that get dark just yet. I know there's a double shadow there. And then I'll move it around. Something that isn't gooped. Now you can do hard edge painting if you like. I am a hard edge painter, you do not have to be. Uh, it's, life is easier when you are not a hard edge painter. Uh, but when you drop something in, you always have to think about how that, how that edge is turning, okay? So when you put paint on, you wanna make sure that you suggest that the paint, that the surface goes behind the subject, right? So you don't wanna like leave that like that you want to make sure that it appears as though it's going behind it, okay? So, and then I'll drop in the cast shadow and we'll call it uh, real close to done because I don't want to eat up more of your time. Okay, so the cast shadow is far more difficult and I'm gonna see reflective color of that green. So rather than just mixing a darker version of that brown, I'll take both of my browns and actually add some of the green that I have already added in order to actually make that happen. And I know that's probably too dark. So I'll knock it back with the other color. And it's going to look a little bit like a, like a muddy purple. So once that's on there, I can begin to kind of deal with my edges. And I know I have a double shadow over here, so I can kind of play with that if I want to. And I'll do that wet and wet. Or I'll make what's around it lighter, depending on what it's calling for. Okay. And then I'll go deep, dark red, deep, dark, deep, deep, dark, dark um, brown for that kind of shadow. Probably darker than that, to be honest. 
So here's a rule of thumb. If what you're dealing with in your lighting scenario is actually incandescent, which is yellow light, you're gonna have a cool shadow. So yellow light, cool shadow. If what you're actually dealing with is blue light, which is sunlight, what you're gonna be dealing with is warm shadow. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's another rule of thumb that you wanna kinda of keep in mind. This is gonna be yellow and not white, which luckily I've got next to me. And we'll call that finished for now. So a neutral color arrangement is what you're looking for with vision. Most people will go straight out of the tube when they're a beginning painter, and that's a bad idea. You have to mix. You have to learn how to match. And you have to experiment in order to be able to see these colors. Okay? So description is not your end-all sale, but it is color, tonality, and atmosphere. And atmosphere will basically be about your edges. Yes, I can put more time in that. Yes, I can harden it up. But ultimately, that's what you're looking for. 